Today on Dr. Phil. Is this church? I consider it a cult. No one is forced to stay here. Destroying this man's family. Did God tell you to take your wedding ring off? Yes, I believe he did. What did I do wrong to warrant God telling her to throw her husband away? You've just decided to go have children with someone else. Is it possible you're just having an affair? I believe that my wife is under some severe mind control. You feel duped because your marriage failed. You're the puppet master, Doug. He's my puppet master? You're seriously going to sit there watching me on stage thinking he's my puppet master? You need to take responsibility for the people's lives that you have harmed. I don't owe you anything. You're the enemy. Do you understand? Let's do it. Why don't we stop all the drama, stop all the fighting, and let's go get you better. Here we go. Have a good show, everybody. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Ready, free. Take it. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. Today we are talking about a custody battle with a twist. A husband claims that his wife has been keeping his children in a religious group that he feels is dangerous. In fact, he thinks that it is very cult-like. Take a look. A Houston man moved his family to a new state to start a whole new life serving God. But he says they ended up inside a cult which cost him everything. According to their website, they operate like a co-op with about 70 members sharing apartments. But after a few months, Todd says his wife started hearing voices telling her to leave him to be with another man, which she eventually did. I want to be a martyr for my Lord and my Savior. I consider it a cult. Todd is fighting for his marriage and custody of his kids. At the same time, he worries the no, fellowship may be growing more nice dangerous. Guy. Well, the husband and wife are both here today and will face off for the first time in months. We're going to get to them in a bit. But first, who is Doug Perry and what is the Fellowship of the Martyrs? Now, is this a cult? I, I certainly don't know. I want to learn some things about it today, and I go at it with a completely open mind, and I hope you do too. Take a look at some of his cyber sermons. I'm committed to doing everything that I can until somebody kills me or Jesus takes me home to utterly, completely destroy institutional church as we've seen it. Maybe you would agree with me that something needs to be done. Something big, something dramatic, something that's going to hurt real bad, and something that's probably going to cost a lot of people their lives to get it done. And I want his temple to be pure. And I want his will to be done. And I believe him. He said we're done with the beard now. It's time to get serious. It's time to move on. It's time to get about our father's business. While Doug Perry obviously has supporters, he also has many critics who have accused FOTUM, as it is called, of being a cult. Now, is Doug a cyber preacher with a new religious point of view or movement or some smooth-talking manipulator? Here's what he has to say. It was about eight years ago that I had the vision from the Lord about how things needed to change, and that's when everything started to shift in my life. Hey guys, this is Doug with Fellowship of the Martyrs. Fellowship of the Martyrs. Com. Fellowship of the Martyrs. Com. And so I started Fellowship of the Martyrs. I don't really have a title. I don't like titles. I just want to be the most dangerous person to Satan on the planet. <laughs> I used to be respected by bankers and lawyers and pastors, and now my best friends are toothless, scary-looking homeless people. We've got ex-meth heads, ex-prostitutes. We've at times had registered sex offenders. We had one guy set himself on fire in the parking lot. We are not a, an organization. We are not a denomination. We are a statement about that the church needs to step up. Right now, we have posted on our channel about 900 videos. We're somewhere between two and a half million and three million views on those videos. The internet accounts for about 50% roughly of the money that comes into the ministry. Spiritual warfare is real. Tear it out. 
I I'm one of many people that see demons. It's not a superpower, demons are real. They might look sometimes like snakes or ticks or uh, octopus. I've been called the Antichrist. God gave me the gift of tongues, as a lot of other people. And I tell you what, I don't know And no, I'm not gonna demonstrate on cue like it's a magic trick. It's the Holy Spirit speaking through you. He says they ended up inside a cult. I consider it a cult. Dangerous cult. Boy, I could live happily the rest of my life if I never heard the word cult again. Cult is such a useless word. People seem to decide that if they call you a cult leader, then they can dehumanize you and marginalize you. No one's being controlled. No one is forced to stay here. Well, Doug took us on a tour of the uh, Fellowship of the Martyrs' Grounds where he says he hears God and also exorcises demons. We're headed over to one of the townhouses to show you guys inside. This is the living room of one of our houses. Nothing much to it. We try to make it livable. This is the basement of one of the houses. Sometimes we have a mom and dad and a kid in one of the basements like this. We have a food pantry. We give away about a million pounds of food a year. We feed about 3,000 to 4,000 people a month. This is one of our crews coming back from our food run. We call it every morning. They go out and access the restaurants and grocery stores that would otherwise be in the trash. Nobody draws a salary. We just pour ourselves out and do the best we can to help in the community. You say this all started when you had a vision. That's correct. You said that there was a trophy wall in the showroom, and you said, one day I'm in there, and the Lord says, come in here and look at this. What do you think of this? And you said, well, you know, I think it's pretty cool. And he says, quote, I think it's all crap. Take it and throw it in the dumpster. This is a shrine to what you built in your power. This is when I have my furniture store. And I had pictures of me and articles on but the wall. God said, I think it's all crap. It was idolatry. It was a shrine to me. But he used the word crap to uh, yeah. you. He pretty well talks the way we talk. I mean, I would have thought he would have at least said crappeth or something. <laughs> Here's something Doug said about seeing people being instantly healed. Take a look at this. I have seen people instantly instantly healed, instantly freed from schizophrenia, from anorexia, from addictions to, to all kinds of drugs, instantly, instantly stopped smoking. People were getting instantly delivered of addictions and depression and agoraphobia and even schizophrenia. I saw chronic pain leave people instantly. I've seen people healed of autism and lupus and Alzheimer's and fibromyalgia and others. I've seen people's leukemia go into remission. I've seen epilepsy go away permanently. I've seen bones healed instantly. The implication for all of these people and, and good families that are suffering from autism and lupus and schizophrenia and Alzheimer's and fibromyalgia and all of these things that you're talking about is suggest that if they're still suffering from this, then they don't really believe. And, and, and that, to me, is offensive to the sensibilities of those people that have these legitimate disorders to just say, if you, if you would just believe, you could be healed from these things. I've never said that. I'm not talking to you from a superstitious, religious, w uh, snake handling, whatever kind of a background, okay? I've got, I've got the academic background to, to understand psychologically versus spiritually, and spiritually works. Now here's something that uh, Doug said about the tragic school shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. I have been praying specifically for Newtown, Connecticut for about four years. I knew that God wanted to do something there, that nothing happens by accident and nothing just sneaks across his desk without you know, him purposing it. You said you've got 900 sermons on the internet. And in those 900 sermons, we couldn't find any mention of Newtown, Connecticut. Okay until two days after that shooting. Okay. Then two days after that shooting, you say, I've been praying about this for four years. But you didn't, there wasn't any, you didn't mention it in those 900 sermons. And I didn't present it as some proof that I hear God either. What is a rib? A rib is uh, a word that we use to talk about somebody that is spouse, bone mm -hmm. of bone, flesh of flesh, <clears throat> marital wife, husband. The reason I, I ask about that is because I have a letter here from one of the people that was a member of the church that now is not. We don't have members. Well, whatever 
a follower? What, what would you call them? I don't know. They came to hang out with us. They, okay, one of the people that came and came and hung out with you that says what me and my family experienced at FOTUM, parentheses, deception, false teaching, and rampant sexual immorality, and what goes on behind the scenes is not shown in Doug's videos, was the most dangerous thing we have gone through. He said when we left FOTUM and warned others through his videos, testifying about what we saw, heard, and experienced, we had threats of violence from FOTUM members. Ex-members told them that they themselves were directed by Doug to pray for the violent death of me and my family. Total flat-up lies. Flat-up lies. You had an expert that reviewed whether or not what you were doing rose to the level of being a cult. Sort of. And they opined that it was not a cult. Right. Actually, and you've cited that letter. Uh, Did. You've referenced that letter, and they said that they didn't think it was a cult. This person said in, in researching photo, yes, I said he could use the letter, but it was written simply to say I did not find mind control or cult activity at that time. It was not a blanket approval of Fodum's teachings and practices. I am responding now in this public venue because of how my letter was misused in public. So in conclusion, repent your sins and get right with God. This is a letter to you. This was a theological discussion after the fact where, and there's nothing in the letter that says I've changed my mind about cultish behavior or mind control Correct. or anything else. There was just a disagreement about a theological point, which happens across, you know, all 41,000 denominations we have in this country now. Mm -hmm. All right, we have to take a break. When we come back, we're going to meet a father who used to follow Doug's teachings and is now calling him a cult leader as he fights to rescue the children that he left behind. We'll be right back. After moving to the Fellowship of the Martyrs, our marriage began to decline. The biggest thing that shocked me was when Jennifer told me that last night God said to take my wedding ring off. Because of Doug Perry, my family and my life has been turned upside down and destroyed. And later, I really question what's going on at FOTUM. You're not taking responsibility. And this young woman, Jennifer, seems to be here. And you're the puppet master, Doug. He's Jennifer. my puppet master? Jennifer, is Doug ever wrong? I've been wrong tons of times. Name three. I don't owe you anything. Name three, Doug. You're the enemy. We're not going to fix the church with Happy and Fluffy. We're not going to fix the church with singing and dancing. Repent. Whatever it is, rip it out. Pluck it out. Tear it out. Be done with it, however much it hurts. Reach in and grab it. And tear it out. We're running out of time. That was Doug Perry, a controversial cyber preacher who founded the Ministry Fellowship of the Martyrs, or FOTUM. He claims no one is being controlled or forced to stay at his headquarters in Missouri. But my next guest says that is not true and regrets the day he ever met Doug. I found Doug Perry through the internet watching his videos. Fellowship of the Martyrs, the church, should be those who mean it all the way. Doug wrongly taught that bad things were on the horizon, that the end times are now. Judgment's coming and the safest place for you to be is in Liberty, Missouri. In June of 2011, I quit my job and we moved to Liberty, Missouri. Anything that we couldn't bring, we either sold or gave away. After moving to the Fellowship of the Martyrs, our marriage began to decline. Jennifer really latched on to Doug Perry. From the beginning, Doug saw how Jennifer really cared for me and loved me, and Doug told her, don't make your husband an idol. Jennifer was very upset that I was not listening to every word that Doug says. She was upset because I wasn't turning Doug into an idol for myself. Sexual promiscuity was a very big issue at Fellowship of the Martyrs. It is strongly advocated that you can hear a voice and it tells you that you're married to someone and then you're not married to them. You kind of bounce around from marriage to marriage. The biggest thing that shocked me was when Jennifer told me that last night God said to take my wedding ring off. So now God was telling her to do things that normally she wouldn't have done. This was totally out of left field. I was in shock and I told her that this is not what God tells people. Jennifer said, I cannot sleep in the same bed with you because that bed is for you and your new wife. 
After that, I, I slept on the floor next to her on the couch to say, look, I'm not going anywhere. I still want this to work out. I do not believe that God said we were divorced. Doug had really ingrained in us that your own family will turn against you and kill you thinking they are doing God a favor. I decided I, I needed to get out of there because it wasn't safe. It's total insanity. Everything was falling apart and I was very concerned for my safety and my children's safety. I made a plan to leave in the middle of the night to leave with my children because I was in fear. I asked Jennifer to come with me several times and she said if I leave the camp I will die. I carried the children out into the van and left at 3 o'clock in the morning. Jennifer was not happy, obviously. She then started accusing me of kidnapping the children, trying to manipulate her and force her to come home. I was arrested for four counts of felony kidnapping. And Jennifer filed for divorce while I was in jail. Because of Doug Perry, my family and my life has been turned upside down and destroyed. I still want to reconcile with my wife. I believe that my wife is under some severe mind control and she's under an influence of a cult. I want to be a martyr for my Lord and my Savior. My biggest fear right now is I don't get to see my kids again. You had all three of the girls there? Yes. How old? Uh, at the time they were three, uh, four, and six? Six or seven. Three, four, and six. They were, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. And what came up about the girls having demons? Well, the youngest girl... Swear I won't forget this, why do I regret this? In my mind reckless, thoughts are feeling endless Sitting up I'm breathless, anxiety's infectious I feel so defenseless, betrayed and embarrassed I hate being open, I hate being broken I feel like an ocean filled up with emotion Anger ain't a potion, rub it on like lotion I can feel it soaking, reopen, the scars have awoken I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go
girl um, was having fits of rage, where she would get upset. There was one instance where she woke up from a nap and was screaming, red-faced, crying, would not stop. And then they said, well, well she has a, a demon. Who's they? Uh, members of the group. Somebody there decided that she, yeah, she was had, she demon had, possessed? She had a spirit of, of murder on her. And I believe Doug at one point agreed with that or said that she had a spirit of murder. And then another daughter had a spirit of seduction? Yes, yes. She was a demon labeled, of seduction? Yeah, Doug actually labeled it as a spirit of seduction because Jennifer had a spirit of seduction that it needed to be taken out of her first. Did you do an exorcism? Well, no, I didn't. Uh, Did somebody? Well, I found out later on the child was screaming and uh, appeared to look like she was in pain while they were casting demons out of her. And she was how old? At the time, she was three. Three. You're just leaving so much stuff out. That you came there, that you believed you heard God, that you believed demons are real, that you were totally on board at every step of the way, that you wore a prayer shawl everywhere, including to work because God told you to, that you haven't worn since because it'd make you look crazy. You're just leaving out tons and tons of stuff. And you were in my office and you were talking about a divorce. No, sir. Yo you are incorrect. All right, next, James' estranged wife is here. We're going to hear what she has to say. We'll be right back. Anyone who says this is a cult, this is the worst cult I've ever seen. I believe that Doug is a prophet. I felt very firmly in my heart that the Lord had said that my marriage with James was done. And James decided that that wasn't God, that I had heard that it was a demon. And later, is this a sinful relationship she's in? She's going to have to answer to God for that. Is it possible you're just having an affair? I had grave concerns for my children living at Fodum. My youngest daughter would have fits of rage where she would scream and yell and cry. One of my other daughters was exhibiting some very unusual behavior of climbing on people, touching them and stroking them very inappropriately. She had said things like, I'm going to take you downstairs and have my way with you. And that very deeply concerned me. My children had been labeled as having demons on them and they actually did try to pray demons out of her. I was told that she was screaming and yelling in pain while they were doing this. Well, James says he's concerned for his children's safety after he claims Doug Perry, founder of the ministry Fellowship of the Martyrs, cast demons out of his young daughter. But his estranged wife, Jennifer, who is currently fighting him in custody court, has this to say about their contentious battle. It was um, in January 2011, we came to Fellowship of the Martyrs. I really liked the sense of community and constant fellowship. I have no fear of me. Anyone who says this is a cult, this is the worst cult I've ever seen. I know that the solution to every problem is get more Jesus. Doug doesn't tell us what to do. He tells us to hit our knees and ask God. He's not controlling at all. Let's pray, okay? I believe that Doug is a prophet. A prophet is someone who speaks the words of the Lord. I knew that my marriage was in trouble for quite some time. One night in January of 2012, I was praying and I felt very firmly in my heart that the Lord had said that my marriage with James was done and to take off my ring. When I told James that I had heard the Lord say that our marriage was over, he cried. <laughs> After a few minutes, he went from being tearful and repentant to being more resolute and hard and no, God would never say that. God would never do that. He was still my wife and he decided that that wasn't God, that I had heard that it was a demon and that God would never do that. We thank you, Lord, for this vessel. That thank Sunday you, night, Jesus. we had fellowship, and James did not go. When I got home from fellowship, the girls were already in bed. I didn't know what James was up to, but I felt like he was up to something. He locked the door, and he then turned around and started walking towards me, yelling and screaming, speaking mostly in tongues. But when he did speak in English, it was things like, you are my wife you will submit to me. At times he kind of lunged towards me. That night I was scared. The next morning I woke up and the kids were gone. I believe that James took the kids for ransom to try to get me to do what he wanted me to do, believing that if he had them, I would obey him. I personally believe that James kidnapped the kids. James filed a restraining order against me saying that I was in a cult and that the children were in danger if they were around me. 
I still love James very much as my brother in Christ. I am now with someone else, and we have a three-week-old baby together. I have no desire to resume a romantic relationship with James. Okay, well, thank you for being here. And um, now, first off, let me ask you, you're still affiliated with or participate in the Fellowship of the Martyrs, correct? Yes. Uh, is it a cult? No, it is not a cult. And you're free to come and go anytime you choose? I am absolutely free to come and go as I choose. I don't have to report or check in with anybody. Okay. We just. Do you think you've ever been brainwashed, mind controlled, um, in any way manipulated in, in your thinking or your behavior in any way whatsoever? No. So if you want to not go back there today, that's okay? I could pack my bags and go. You wouldn't be fearful for your safety or your life or your children in any way whatsoever? No, in no way whatsoever. And you're not saying that just because he's sitting right here? No. Did you have problems in your marriage before you went to visit in Liberty? Yes. And y'all are still married? Yes, we are still legally married. Okay, but now you're, you consider yourself to be married to someone else? Yes. Is this a sinful relationship she's in? She's going to have to answer for God, to God for that. I'm not, it's, it's not my job to enforce the Ten Commandments. It sounds to me like you're more upset because you feel duped because your marriage failed. Well, I was duped all around. So you're looking around. to blame him, you're looking to blame me, you're looking to blame the ministry and not accept responsibility for anything that you did and you participated in. When I asked you just to apologize to me, why can't you apologize to me for taking the children from me for two months? You told me that you couldn't do it. So you can't accept responsibility for what you did, but you're able to point the finger and say it's because of him, it's you, because of her, it's because of that. You weren't really interested in speaking with the kids for like three or four, or like a month during some of that time. Do you know why I didn't want to speak to them? Because I didn't want to see them cry for me. Because I didn't want to have to answer their questions about, Mom, why aren't you here? Because I thought it would be easier for them if they just got to be on a little vacation with Daddy. later we're talking about children who are living in the equivalent of a homeless shelter sir i'm really them. not impressed by your silver tongue and your little hot shot credentials i know that you're there to intimidate me did god tell you to take your wedding ring off yes i believe he did i had been seeking the lord for quite a while in our marriage and i felt that night when i was praying the lord say that it was done and i didn't obey right away um, because I was kind of in shock. Is it possible you're just having an affair? <laughs> I think it's a fair question, and I can absolutely understand why someone would ask me that. And I think from the outside, um, from a secular point of view, or even um, most mainstream Christians would look at it that way, and I understand that. And then you've just decided to go have children with, with someone else. And now you have a baby, right? Yes. So you, you have a husband that the state recognizes, and now you have a rib, and now you have a baby with the rib. So you got, what, a baby back, baby back, baby back? <laughs> I, uh, well, you, but if that, now if that doesn't work, then you have, you have nothing from that. I'm trying to live my life relying on the Lord. So I'm not really looking forward to like, oh no, if this goes wrong, what's going to happen to me financially or whatever. Like I'm relying on the Lord today and seeking well, to I, obey I the get Lord that, but I'm one of those people that believes pray to God, but row for the shore. <laughs> you know, you got to take care of yourself mm -hmm. too. I would like to say something because I have asked her afterwards, what did I do wrong to warrant God telling her to throw her husband away. And she, she couldn't give me an answer, and the only answer she gave me was, is you need to pray and ask God and let God tell you. So to this day, I don't even know what I did wrong as a husband. I also another time said, I would love to sit down and have a private conversation with you, that I didn't think it was appropriate to discuss it in front of the kids, that didn't. I didn't think, you tried to have the discussion with me in front of the there kids. There was not a discussion in front of the kids. Well, you certainly shouldn't do that in front of the kids, and if she, if she is offering you to have a private conversation about that, I, I certainly think that would be a constructive thing to do. The two of you need to sit down with someone not affiliated with this ministry that is consistent with your values, put all of this on the table, 
and discuss it. I would love to do something like and, that. I've been uh, begging him for face-to-face, -face, let's and sit down and talk like reasonable that? adults. I'm, I'm willing to do that. Matt O'Connor uh, is here. He's the attorney who's representing James in his custody battle. Uh, Matt, this would be something that is constructive, and, and hopefully something could be resolved on the criminal side of this as well. True? Not while well, Doug Perry's involved, um, because everything's about Doug, his typical megalomania. We've never no, met before, have we? We've and, never and we met, sir, and you've we've made many talked. quotes about the, the ministry and other things. You've like never been one. to our ministry. You've never been I to one of our that. fellowship okay, meetings. Okay, one no. let, me, let me, hold on. Let me speak to him for a minute, okay. and if you want to yell at him in a minute, I'll give you time. Because okay, go ahead. It's Great. important because they keep throwing up these things that are inaccurate. They talk about the parental kidnapping. Those, those charges were dismissed. I said in my personal court. opinion, and there's a reason I said that, because I understand legally the charges have been dismissed, but it is still my personal opinion that he kidnapped my children. Well, a judge ruled there wasn't even probable cause, and as Dr. Phil, as you know from your consulting days, that's a very low standard, and right. the judge found that. Um, Mr. Todd had good cause to remove the children from the home. So we were no, handcuffed. No, he did not find that he had good cause to remove the children because that would have required a trial and that would have been a verdict by the judge. What everybody's not talking about, we're talking about that gentleman who doesn't really need to be here. What we need to be talking about is what's best for the kids. We're talking about children who are living in the equivalent of a homeless shelter. Sir, I'm really not impressed by your silver tongue and your little hot shot credentials. I know that you're there to intimidate me. What we need to be talking about is what's best for the kids. Yes. Nobody's even mentioned that. You're talking about kids oh, who are living in... Oh, I have absolutely mentioned okay, what's best on, for the children, including that I'd like for them to have a relationship on. with their hey, father. Uh, Helen, I really do want to talk to him, and you're seriously... You're, I'm going to do it. You cannot filibuster. I am going to talk to her. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's not a robot. Let me just so, I'm not a robot. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> We're talking about children who are living in the equivalent of a homeless shelter right now and up until we were able to address the criminal charges and the court ruled and those were dismissed there wasn't a lot we could do and james alluded to that now that we have that done we're doing what any any lawyer and any father as james would do is try to get the kids out of that environment well here's a list of the dangerous situations that james says that he has witnessed uh, a photo member currently residing in the compound stabbed another member five times witness that, witness that. And that was years before. Uh, <laughs> members are known to participate in wife swapping. That's his personal opinion. Jennifer's spiritual husband He's owns assault husband. rifles and boasts about carrying a gun he at all times. He does own a rifle and a handgun. Jennifer which admits to having for. Oklahoma bombing suspect uh, Greg Weiler around no, her children. No, I said he lived in the townhouse complex. Uh, I didn't children really children have allegedly children. exhibited strange behavior, including inappropriate touching. That's just Children are allegedly at risk of physical and mental harm. Children have <laughs> allegedly been verbally abused by members. I would love to hear specific examples Jennifer of allows people from compound to sleep in her home without regard for safety of the children. Those are the things that he says he is concerned about. Sir, I'm really him. not impressed by your silver tongue and your little hot shot credentials. I know that you're there to intimidate me, no. and that I really sincerely believe you don't have his best interest at heart. You're here to make a name for yourself, and that I think the facts. I think are you're going to answer for someday to the Lord, because if you had his best interest in heart, you would be trying to talk some sense into this man that the charges that he's making are ludicrous. Are you concerned about what they're exposed to? No, I'm not concerned about what they're exposed to. I believe that. I need to be diligent as a parent, period, regardless of where I live. For the record, with all of this mess going on, I am still willing to reconcile with my wife, taking on the responsibility of even a new baby that's not even mine, because I recognize that my wife right now is not in a sound mind. I think you know me well enough that I am stubborn and hard-headed and I tend to not listen to anyone tell me what to do. The only one that has been able to get me under submission is the Lord. Right, I next, to we're going to talk um, about something else. The family of a young man currently incarcerated for plotting a criminal act they believe was inspired by Doug Perry's teachings. We'll be right back. a cyber preacher who has over 900 cyber sermon videos on YouTube. He claims his ministry is all about good works, but there was a criminal plot that made headlines that the family of the individual attribute to him. Now, what they're talking about 
is Doug made some comments in one of his cyber sermons. Now, clearly, I, I, I looked at this, and it, clearly it was an analogy. It was not something you were assigning or advocating. It was an analogy, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. But, and let's, let's take a look at the news piece first, then we'll look at the analogy. Take a look. Greg Weiler is an example of one of my worst fears come true. Police say they have arrested a man who had the tail plans to burn down every church up in Miami. Gregory Weiler II is being held without bond tonight, accused of violating Oklahoma's anti-terrorism laws. Police say they recovered a hand-drawn map from Weiler's motel room with the locations of all 48 Miami churches. Investigators say he also had enough explosives to carry out his plan and a detailed journal with plans to, quote, remove church buildings from the U.S. at time any bit at a time. He had materials to make 50 Molotov cocktails and plans to blow up 48 churches. Okay, so this is an individual who I saw deteriorate. He's getting drunk in the basement in Doug's house, and next thing I hear is he's been arrested. Let me be real clear. Nobody's a member of FOTM. Greg was not a member of anything. He stayed at our homeless shelter, and we loved him. Nobody funded his trip. I believe that the whole idea was demonically inspired. It has been used as ammunition against us. It's certainly doing harm to his life, but otherwise nobody was really hurt. I believe that Fodum has a very high potential of doing something very drastic. This gives him a very high probability of being like the next Jim Jones or the next David Koresh or the next Heaven's Gate, of having something crazy happening because of the bizarre rituals and the bizarre beliefs that they hold. Well, Gregory Weiler's family declined appearing on the show because they claim they're fearful of Doug Perry, but they sent a videotape message. Here it is. Due to our safety, we have decided not to be on the show in person. Doug says that something needs to be done, and something that's probably going to cost a lot of people their lives. Doug compares an analogy of aircraft carriers to churches. He suggests bombing the aircraft carrier would quickly change its course, which would tend to make us believe he's referring to the bombing of churches. To a vulnerable, mentally ill Greg, this could come off as a chance for him to prove himself as a follower of Doug's teachings. In a person of Greg's state of mind, he could easily take this literally. We don't want anyone ever to have to go through all the hurt and worry and stresses that we and other families have gone through. Um, Rick Ross is the founder and executive director of the Rick A. Ross Institute <laughs> and an expert on cults, controversial groups, and movements. He says he's very familiar with Doug Perry and the Fellowship of the Martyrs. What do you think is going on here? I really question what's going on at FOTUM. I question the kind, of, the kind of influence that is existing there. And quite frankly, at times in the way in which you come across, you're not taking responsibility and this young woman Jennifer seems to be here and you're the puppet master Doug you, I'm, you present, he's my look. puppet master you're yes. seriously gonna sit there watching me on stage thinking he's yes, my puppet master? yes that's the way that you've been handling yourself in the way you berated the attorney in the way that oh, you talk no, sir, over trust people me, I've been waiting and to do Doug that. you kind of sit back there <laughs> that has not, to I have, have not even happen. discussed with Doug Did you Perry coach her, my Doug? opinions Did as a lawyer here not. he had nothing to do Absolutely with that not. and I, I can tell you I personally disagree with him numerous times to come visit any time and talk to people they do not believe that whatever I don't need to smoke to know that smoking is not a good idea. I don't need to go to FOTUM to find out that FOTUM's a bad idea. And you need to take responsibility for the people's lives I, that you have harmed. Jennifer, is, is Doug ever wrong? I, I've disagreed with him more than can once, you sir. Can you name if three you times that Doug has been wrong? I can name much. Na name something besides maybe his clothing style or his grooming. <laughs> Can you name anything of substance where there you would say Doug is There are some doctrinal things that wrong. I disagree with Doug. Pardon? There are some doctrinal things There's that I disagree with There's nobody there that agrees with me on everything. Jennifer? And I don't need them He's to. Not asking you, you what are, are they? Can she speak for herself? Oh, 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 I can You're speak for myself. You're accusing me. You're ridiculous. I've been wrong tons of times. Name three. I don't owe you anything. Name three, Doug. You're the enemy. You understand? Okay, I'm the you enemy. Are, you, you have spiritual are intent on doing harm. To, to I know ministry, you're an apostle. To a food pantry. No one can disagree with Doug. And if you no, thought, but, but that's but not being a cult leader. 
You need to if come I and talk to myself, people that I'm a live there. No, if, but go, when you, the picture when you characterize that Doug, anybody everybody that has a response Doug, to you must be a cult Doug, leader. If you Rick, characterize Rick, everybody Rick, and everything Rick, that Doug, Rick, Rick, Doug, Rick, Doug, Rick, 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 can you be any more patronizing and condescending, Doug, Rick? Can you be ever you wrong? You don't know me at all, Doug, Rick. Do you ever take responsibility for anything you Absolutely. do? Absolutely. Absolutely. What? I don't owe you anything, Rick. All right, Doug. You are here. And who is patronizing? You, who Rick. Who is patronizing? You are, Doug? Rick. Let me ask you something. Do you believe that people have mental illness other than being possessed, other than Absolutely. having a disconnect from Absolutely. God? Absolutely. And so there are people that come that, in fact, need treatment, Absolutely. maybe need medication, maybe need guidance away from you towards traditional treatment. Absolutely. And would this young man have been one of those? Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. No, I don't... And this young uh, man, you said he's an adult and, and he made up his own mind, but the fact is, if he's incapacitated, then he is not capable of giving informed consent. Well, there's a whole lot of gray area between adult and incapacitated. There's a, there's a whole lot of space in there for other people to misdiagnose too, make bad decisions, over medicate people. Well, you the know, fact I, is I know, that I, you I may not be qualified people. to make that decision. No, all I can do is love him. And if he shows up on my doorstep, I'm going to love him. I'm going to let the parents know that he's there. I'm going to let the parents know that he's safe. I coordinated with him, talked to the phone with him a lot of times. But he's not safe it's if not what safe he there. needs is treatment and he's with you instead. That's the point. You said there were two things you wanted people to know about this ministry. What were they? We're doing a lot of good stuff. There are 3,000 people a month getting fed in that, through our food pantry, a million pounds of food. There are people that would be dead under bridges, frozen to death if we hadn't taken them in. We're trying to do something different than chandeliers and new gymnasiums and cathedrals and try to live out what Jesus said to do to care for the least of these. We're going to take a break, and when you come back, I'm going to tell you the one thing you've said that I found the most offensive and most outrageous thing you've said that I simply cannot get past. We'll be right back. Well, we've been talking today about the fellowship of the martyrs. There's been a lot of talk about whether this is a cult or whether it's not. I'll let you make up your own mind about that. Uh, you know, I believe in freedom of religion. I believe in freedom of speech. And, you know, the Internet is an interesting phenomenon, don't you think? It gives everybody that's got a computer and a camera a platform where they can get up and talk about anything that they want to talk about. Now, earlier I played Sarah for him to comment on and react to. There's one other that, frankly is just offensive to my sensibilities. Last night, I went out and prayed that God would kill everybody on the planet. That's just stupid. You want some context for that? No, I don't care what the context is. What I care about is, you know, and, and you, know, you, you apparently think it's funny, but you know what I hear you know, in the absence of real leadership, there are certain people in this world that will follow anybody. And that's dangerous. But what I just heard is some guy with a camera. It's interesting because this morning I prayed that God would watch over you. And specifically you. I prayed for and you I too. prayed that God would watch over everybody that's up there in Liberty, Missouri. And then you get on the internet and pray about that. That they would die to and that's their just flesh. Stupid. Not that that's their reckless. heart would stop beating. Not that they would blow up. It's just up. a way to draw attention to yourself. You, you're, you're, and you ought not do that. That, that is so out of context. You just ought not do that. <laughs> you just ought not do that. I'm sorry if you're offended, but you're offended about a half of a sentence taken out of context. Yeah, I'm offended by the way you're using this platform to draw attention to yourself. If you want to go do good works, go do them. 
but don't use this to draw attention to yourself and in so doing misguide people that are vulnerable and then they go off in a direction that you don't, you're just not around to clean up the mess. I get emails every day from people that are closer to I want to thank all of my guests for being here today. Special thanks to cult expert Rick Ross. Thanks for being here. So long.